Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making a very simple DIY glove box which is going to come in handy for some future Element Series videos. And if you haven't seen one before, a glove box is very simply a sealed container that has gloves attached to it that allows you to work inside the container uh, keeping you separate from any harmful chemicals or keeping very sensitive chemicals separate from the air. And what we have in front of us is uh, hopefully everything that's needed to construct this thing. Given my history with projects, I'll probably have to make several trips to Home Depot before this is done, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's get started. Now the first component of the glove box will of course be the box. So I just bought a plastic container. Uh, really any container will work, just whatever size you need. So I liked this particular box because uh, it's got this air and moisture resistant seal. So if we take the lid off, and take a look. Uh, it's got this foam liner around the inside here and that's going to help to seal the box completely. Uh, if your box does not have a foam liner like that, that can easily be done by just a strip of foam with uh, like weather stripping or something to that effect. So the first thing we'll need to do is make ports for the gloves. Um, so we want to do that at a height that's uh, nice and comfortable for us. So for me that's probably about halfway up the box I guess. Um, and the ports are going to be made out of these. These are uh, rings of PVC, 3 inch PVC pipe that I cut out of a larger pipe. Um, I use 3 inch because my hands are small enough to fit through it. Um, you could certainly use a different size if you need to. I just wanted to get the smallest size possible uh, so to not stretch the gloves out too much because I feel like if the gloves are, are very stretched they're not going to last very long. All right, I've traced out the outside of each of the PVC pipes. And uh, now I'm going to try to cut it with uh, a knife here. And this may be pretty difficult, so uh, I'm going to put the camera down and we'll see how it goes. Well, the knife really didn't work out very well, but uh, what does work is a, is a rotary tool. I use my Dremel and uh, I got this cut out nicely. And uh, the PVC pipe fits in there pretty good, uh, nice and snug. So now let's try the other one. And this is, it gets a little difficult because uh, the plastic actually melts, so it kind of reseals the, the holes that you do. But that's what the knife is for, cleaning it up a little bit. Perfect. Now I can go back and use the knife to clean it up a little bit. Scrape off all the melted plastic and uh, flesh out the hole a little bit more so that the pipe can actually fit in it. Because I don't think I cut it quite wide enough. Now that we've got both of the glove ports installed, the next piece to go in is the gas inlet. So I'm going to be using my glove box as an inert atmosphere chamber. So I'm going to need some way to get my inert atmosphere into the box. And uh, that's going to be from this thing, a quarter inch hose barb. Uh, so I need to drill a hole in the side of the box somewhere for this to fit into. And now I've got the box set on its side, propped up by a couple pieces of wood. And I'm going to drill through the box and straight into the wood. Uh, that way I'm not going to stress the plastic and potentially crack it because it'll be supported by the, the wood. Uh, and I'll use a half inch paddle bit to get that done. Uh, forgive me for the lack of audio here. I actually had the mic muted when I recorded this segment, so go figure. But you can see it makes a nice clean hole. So I'll just flip the box back right side up and now I can thread the hose barb in place. So notice the placement on the gas inlet is in the back and on the bottom because I'm going to be using argon as my inert gas. Argon is heavier than air, so I figure I'll put the gas inlet on the bottom. It'll slowly flow in and fill up the box and uh, displace the air at the top. Um, now to get out the top, we need an outlet for the gas. And uh, I'm going to use this combination of things. We got a quarter inch uh, ball valve and a connector. It's a pipe nipple. And uh, that's going to be up on the top of the box here for the air to escape. And then once, once it's filled with argon, I can close off the, the ball valve. And hopefully that'll be good enough. So I drilled this hole just like before uh, on the top of the box this time. And I was able to thread this pipe nipple in there. And uh, now we can get the ball valve on top of that. So now that all the pieces are in place, we just need to epoxy all of the seals 
to seal them in there permanently and close off any uh, leaks. And I'm gonna use this instant mix epoxy stuff. You know, this thing's pretty cool because of the, the tip uh, it mixes as it flows out. That's a neat little bit of fluid dynamics there. So we're gonna apply epoxy all the way around on all pieces and on both sides of each piece. I've let the epoxy set up overnight, which is probably a little excessive, but uh, I figured why not? Um, everything is now in there securely. We've got the two glove ports in the front, um, the gas inlet in the back, and the gas outlet up top. So now all that's left is to attach the gloves. So I flipped the box upside down, um, and now we're gonna stick the gloves on, and uh, gotta make sure to do this the, the right way. Uh, left glove goes on the left here with the palm facing up and so forth because um, now this top surface is going to be actually at the bottom. Uh, so all we got to do is slide these over the PVC mounting, which can be a little tricky. There we go. And now to permanently secure the gloves in place, we're going to use these uh, pipe clamps, I think they're called, the three to five inch uh, pipe clamps. And I've already done it on the one glove, but it's very simple. It just goes over the other one on top of the PVC and you just use a screwdriver to secure it in place. Make sure the glove is as far back as you can so you have the most surface area. So with that, the glove box is complete. Gloves are secured. We've got gas outlet, gas inlet, and the gas inlet runs over the side here to my argon cylinder. And this is what we're going to be using uh, to make the inert atmosphere. This is a 40 cubic foot tank of argon with a flow meter regulator um, that tells me the speed that the gas is coming out. All right, let's take her on a maiden voyage. So you can see the uh, regulator here. Um, there's a little ball that when you open the valve, it floats up to the uh, proper flow rate. So this is in standard cubic feet per hour. So if we do this at 10 standard cubic feet, I've calculated that this will take six and a half minutes to completely fill my box. Uh, I don't wanna really go really fast because um, then I want it to just slowly flow into the bottom and displace the air as it flows out the top. So I've come up with a, a very crude test to see when the box is full. Um, I've got the valve up here open and what I'm going to do is just light a match and place it at the exit and you can see the air that's coming out is blowing the flame around but the flame is still lit. If I try that and the flame goes out that means the argon's coming out and there's no air left in the box more or less. All right it's been seven minutes so let's redo my match test see how that goes. Ah goes out a lot easier. It's still burning a little bit. I think probably because, you know, in theory it takes six and a half minutes, but, um, you know, in practice, it's not going to exactly displace the air. It's going to mix a little bit. So we're going to have to fill this a bit longer than theory. Let's try it again real quick. Oh, it's close, man. I'll give it another minute, I think. So to test this, let's compare the difference in the rate of tarnishing from a reactive metal in air versus inside the glove box. So let's start with lithium, because that's the first thing I'm going to use the box for. And uh, right now it's in the air and it's hot and very humid out, so we'll see how quickly this actually tarnishes when it's freshly cut. You can see lithium is a, is a fairly soft metal, so you can cut through it pretty easily. And you cut it and it reveals a nice shiny metallic surface. And let's just watch that for a minute. See, that didn't take very long at all. This left piece is already completely tarnished and the right one is well on its way. All right, box is filled with argon. I think we're ready to test this thing out. This will also be a good test of whether I can do uh, manual dexterity operations with these, these big gloves. These are uh, 
black neoprene gloves, by the way, which provide pretty good chemical resistance overall. I got them mostly because they're long. All right, now I hope you can see this, but we're gonna slice this up just like the last one and see how long it takes to tarnish. So you see we got the nice shiny metallic surface. I think you can see that okay. And let's see how long this lasts. Well, it definitely went slower, but it still tarnished uh, pretty quickly. That's going to take some thought. Uh, maybe I need to flush it out a little bit longer with argon to really get all the, the oxygen and the, and the moisture out of there. Um, or possibly I could add some kind of moisture absorbent uh, like those hot hands uh, hand warmers. I've seen videos where people use those as moisture absorbers to, to pretty good effect. So there you have it, a DIY glove box that works reasonably well. Um, I think I need to, like I said, tweak it a little bit, maybe add a couple of things to it. But um, as it stands, uh, it took me about 40 bucks to build this entire thing, um, plus the cost of the argon cylinder, which adds probably $175 total with all of the, the cylinder and the regulator and all that. Um, but just the box itself was only 40 bucks. So that's really, that's pretty good as far as glove boxes go. And it took me probably a total of two or three hours to build it, but I bet you if you were a bit more handy than I am, then this could easily be done in, in less than an hour. And any improvements I make, uh, I'll show in the next video where I use the glove box. So in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.